Hello, my name is Rick Lewis. I'm with Phenon Hoop Report. On today's Coach and Corner, I have Matt Size from Forest Hills High School. Welcome, Coach. Thanks, Coach Lewis. I uh, appreciate you having me. Um, honored to be here, and it means a lot that you guys would reach out and um, invite me to be a part of it. So, um, really cool. Um, looking forward to having a chance to talk with you. Thank you. Coach, in my opinion, you're one of the state top coaches. You have a remarkable record, especially at Forest Hill since you've been there. You won the state championship in 2018, and you're a runner-up in 2019 to that really talented team from Farmville Central. In addition to that, you made the Final Four four years. You went to the Final Four in 2016, 2017, and also in 2018. The past six years at Forest Hills, you've won 162 games. That's an average of 27 games per season. That's pretty remarkable at the public school side. Now, you were telling me that you graduated from Mount Pleasant High School in 2000 under Coach Andy Poplin. Later on, you graduated from Furman University. You became a teacher and assistant coach under Andy Poplin. That was your first coaching job. What was it like going back and being an assistant coach to the guy who coached you in high school? Um, I could describe it in a lot of ways. Um, it was really cool. It was eye-opening. Uh, it was humbling. Um, most of all, I'd say I'm, I'm forever grateful. I'm forever uh, indebted to Coach Pop for giving me an opportunity. I still remember my senior year in high school, uh, a conversation Coach and I had. Uh, when I told him I, I, I really thought I wanted to be a high school coach and then I thought it would be really cool to come back and coach with him one day. Um, I still remember exactly where we were when we had that conversation. Um, so it's really neat to look back on that. And I, like I said, I'm forever grateful to him because Coach Poplin, when he was at Concord, he didn't, he didn't need me. Um, yeah, he had already got things turned around at Concord um, and it was already established as, as one of the best coaches in the state. And so here's this young college kid that's uh, coming out of college and uh, thinks he knows everything and has got every, got got the world figured out. And um, Coach Poplin took me under his, his wing uh, and and uh, helped me every day uh, alongside him was was like a coaching clinic. And I just tried to soak up as much as I could from him. Um, so many lessons about about preparation and um, and how to run a team. I just uh, every day, like I said, was a clinic. Um, and it was neat to coach alongside your former coach and kind of a lesson that I took from him is, is you know, giving your know, former players opportunities. Um, so that's something that we've got, I've got two of my uh, former players on staff um, at Forest Hills now. And so I, I just uh, really indebted to him and, and um, he, he provided the foundation for, uh, for everything I know about coaching, so. Well, when you went to Furman, you were a walk-on at Furman University for two years. Talk about your experience there. And a lot of people don't understand how difficult it is just to be a walk-on. And you do the same things that a scholarship player does during the course of the season. No doubt. Um, being a walk-on was, was tough, but it was really, really a rewarding experience. And it, it was a dream of mine to play college basketball. I'm thankful that Larry Davis um, gave me a chance to try out and make the team at Furman. Uh, and one of the first things I found out um, was I wasn't very good. <laughs> you get, uh, you, you get there and you get to a, a division one level and you realize, man, everybody's bigger, faster, stronger than me and more skilled than me. Um, uh, so you had to, you had to fight every day um, it, just to hold your own. But as a walk on, um, you're required to go through the same things all the other scholarship players are. Uh, same drills, same conditioning, um, same same academic requirements. Um, but one of the things that you, you don't get, you don't get all the all the same benefits usually. Um, Walk-ons a lot of times don't get the same gear. Um, you don't get the same amount of practice reps. Um, a lot of times you're spending time on the scout team. Uh, maybe you're holding a practice dummy. So it's it's really um, it's a humbling experience. Um, but it was. Tremendous for me because I got to look on the inside, an inside look of how a college program is run. Um, and I think maybe the greatest part about it that, that I look back now on is as I got to be part of a team, be part of something that's bigger than myself um, and develop those relationships with teammates. Um, and I got to, um, you know, feel what it's like to be 
one of those guys on the end of the bench and and something maybe I don't always do the best job of and so, but something that that I've always been in the back of my mind as I coach is trying to make those guys that are number nine number 10 number 11 number 12 that, that don't see playing time maybe you know trying to make them feel like they're a huge part of the team um and like I said I look back on my career and I'm like mm, I could have done a better job of that in certain situations um but I think those guys are so important to the team uh for from a practice standpoint and from a team chemistry standpoint. So it gave me, it gave me that perspective um, uh, from a, a guy that's a practice player and a guy that's sitting on the end of the bench. So it, it definitely um, was a, a huge learning experience for me. I would imagine those two years being a walk on and, and the, the experience that you had there at Furman really were instrumental in who you are today as a coach at the high school level and the lesson, especially being that guy, walk-ons don't get, you know, you go through the same, some of the same things day in, day out, but you don't get the, the uh, other awards as far as playing time. Like you said, you're sitting at the end of the bench, but you really get to understand basically what it feels like to be that guy at the end of the bench. So when you're coaching, you can be a little bit more sentimental toward your, your entire team. In 2007, you were assistant coach with Andy Poplin at Concord, and y'all won a state championship that year. But I know that for you personally, um, you want to be a teacher and a coach. That first year at Concord, you also won a very prestigious award as far as one of the, the top teachers there. Um, how has your experience of being a, a really good teacher dovetailed in to your ability to be a good coach? Um. First of all, thinking about that brings back um, so many awesome memories. The the journey um, at Concord, um, 2006 we we lost the Greensboro Dudley in the state championship, and then 2007 we returned and were able to win over Kinston. Um, tremendous journey and the relationships built there with the coaching staff and the players is something that I'll look back on uh, fondly for the rest of my life. Um, as far as teaching goes. Um, one of my favorite quotes about about teaching is is from is from John Wooden. Um, he says that you haven't taught until they've learned. Um, that's something that I read um, maybe may, maybe ten years ago. One of my favorite books, um, and it really stuck with me. Is is you haven't done a good job teaching until your students or uh, your players have retained it and learned. And so that's kind of how yeah, I've tried to approach. Uh, teaching and coaching. I, I don't think teaching is necessarily about teaching. I think it's it's more it needs to be focused on on learning and and how your players and how your students learn. Um, and so sometimes what what looks best from a teaching perspective um, maybe looks good, but but is not as much not as effective um, from from a learning perspective. And so I, I try to approach my my teaching and coaching career from from the viewpoint of how are my players going to learn? How are my students going to learn? And so I think that's, that, that's helped me along. Um, it helped me in, in, you know, develop my, my teaching and uh, coaching philosophy. So. Well, coach, you're still a very young coach, but you've had tremendous success. Um, your first head coaching job was at Anson County. Um, that was in 2008. And I think the first year you were there was seven and 16. Um, the second year you turned it around, you went 19 and 10. And the next three years at Anson, you went to the state playoffs. And you just – it seems like everywhere you've gone in just a short period of time, Anson at Forest City, you've been able to take that team to the state playoffs. My question is, you know, being such a young coach, your first head coaching job at Anson, what lessons did you learn from Coach Poplin as a player and a coach that helped pave the way for your success at Anson? Um. I was very fortunate when I arrived at Anson. Um, timing, we had a, a great group of, of young players that were talented, that, that really wanted to learn and really wanted to be good and really wanted to be pushed and coached. Um, and, and so we, we really, uh, we, we meshed together really well, very quickly. We weren't, we weren't ready that, that first year to win, um, but, the, the, the guys the guys were ready to work um, and so that second year they really saw um, some benefits from all from all the work they put in and um, so that was it was a, a tremendous thrill to see them 
succeed and, and win the conference championship and, and be rewarded for all their hard work. Um, I would say to go to your question, um, to address your question about Coach Poplin and, and the lessons that I, I took from him, I would say, um, number one, just the value of being a, a, a continuous learner. Um, he used to always say that there's a lot of different ways to win at this game. And, and I, I think that's, that's correct. You can win playing slow and playing a, playing a two, three zone. And I think you can win pressing and, and, um, playing fast. And, and so, um, something that I always would pick up from, from coach is that he was always the first one at clinics and he was always trying to learn and he was trying to always pick other coaches brains. And, um, so, uh, learning is continuous. I think another thing too, I picked up is just, um, and I, I picked this up from my, from my father as well. And just the value of, of preparation, um, just being a hard worker and being very, very detailed in your planning and your practice planning and uh, your scouting. Um, and that's something that, that I try to take the day is, is practice is sacred and your preparation from practice is really important. And um, spending several hours preparing every practice plan and making sure every detail is, is, is fine tuned and, coaching staffs on the same page about what we're going to do. So I, I definitely, I took that from him. Um, and then I guess the biggest lesson maybe is, is coaching your players hard, but loving them hard too. And uh, I think the greatest compliment you can give a, a player is, is to really coach them hard and to demand them, demand their very best. Um, but then when it's over, like when practice is over, it's over. Um, hug them, love them. Let's go have fun. Let's laugh. Let's joke. Um, and you know that I care about you and we have a relationship, but when we step across the, the lines and we step on the court, I'm going to push you to be your best and, and I'm going to demand, uh, demand your best um, because that's, uh, that proves that I care about you. So, Well, in 2012, you became the head coach at Forest Hills and your track record there has just been remarkable. In the eight years you've been there, you've been to the state playoffs every single year. You've won 162 games. And like I said earlier, you've averaged 27 wins per season since you've been at Forest Hills. Um, you've been to the final four five years and you won the state championship in 2018. How were you able to build and develop the winning culture? And what do you think is success to maintain that? Um, it's a, it's, it's a hundred percent a team effort. And the top of that is, is our players. Um, I've been so blessed to coach, um, guys, not only at Anson, but at, at Forest Hills, like you said, a group of kids that, that, that love basketball, they love playing basketball. Um, they want to be pushed, they want to work hard and they also have, they also have, have, have the character piece. Um, and so not only are they talented, but they're really good kids. Uh, we've got a special group of kids at Forest Hills and I just, uh, you know, they, those guys are the ones that deserve the credit. I haven't scored a bucket yet. And um, so you know, it's, it's fun to be along for the ride. It also starts at the top at our school. We've got um, leadership at our school is fantastic. Our principal, Dr. Kevin Plew, um, knows the value of athletics um, and, and the, the piece that athletics can play in the in a, in a development of, of young people. And so um, him and our athletic director, Thomas, have been so, so supportive. And then our, our coaching staff, um, like I said, I've coached with my father. I've coached with some of my former players. Um, our coaching staff just invested in the lives of our players um, makes our program better every day. And then I, I'd kind of I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that um, how special our community is at Forest Hills. Um, this day and age, there's not a ton of community schools left um, with the, the growth of, of high schools and the expansion of high schools. Forest Hills is still a true community school with Marshville and Wingate. Um, it's just a special place to be a part of. It's hard to put into words, but we're truly, we're truly a hometown team. Um, our crowd is the heartbeat of our team. Um, our, our players uh, have grown up in the community and, and the community has raised them. So when they see them on our, our home court and they see them play, they feel like they've had a partner in a part of their lives. So um, that's, that's been huge for us. Um, I'd say all, all those, um, all those factors have been, uh, all those people have been a huge, played a huge part in, in our success. So. 
Well, Coach, I have your Forest Hills, um, our program's culture, and I like the, the quote that you have. It says, culture never takes a holiday, goes on vacation, or calls in sick. Talk about your code of ethics, the three pillars of that. Um, so, so culture, I, I just think culture is, is who you are every day and how you live and breathe your values. Um, I think those values can be wh whatever you choose them to be. Um, and you have to pick those as a head coach and what, what you want your program to be about. Uh, uh, we've family pride and commitment is, 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 is our three, our three pillars. Um, and, and that's what we want our program to be about. Uh, family, we want to create a situation where it's okay to say I love you. And, and we say that every day, multiple times. It's okay to hug each other, uh, try to hug all of our players every single day. Um, and that uh, not only are, is, is it the players and the coaches in our program, but um, the teachers in our school building and, and uh, the administrators and the people that are in the community feel like that they're a part of our family too. And so Forest Hills is a big family. And then when, whenever you graduate and leave, you're still part of that. You come back and you visit the locker room and you visit practices and games. Um, so so that, that's huge for us. Pride, um, we talk about pride can be positive and negative. And we try to view, use pride in a positive way, being proud of being from Marsville and from Wingate and playing for your community and proud of our uh, unbelievable facilities at Forest Hills and proud of our locker room and just being proud of your teammates um, and, and playing for those reasons. And then commitment, um, we just we try to talk about regardless of circumstance or regardless of how we feel um, or regardless of what's happened to us, that that, that, that doesn't matter. That uh, commitment is, is un, unwavering regardless of, you know, what you're going through, that we're committed to each other and we're committed to doing our best for each other. Well, a lot of times coaches will have like, you know, goals and expectations for the year. You have daily goals and as a team and, you know, I'm looking at your daily goals and number one is very interesting. And I think it's most important. You say have fun. Number two, get better. Number three, compete to win at everything. And number four, game point mentality. Talk about how you establish your daily goals with your team. Uh, so this is something that um, that I've stolen and, and modified a little bit, and, and you know, placed in our, our program. Co Coach McKillop at Davidson has uh, had a tremendous influence on me, um, and these are these are four things that I've I've stolen from him. Um, and we don't talk about winning in our basketball program. We don't we don't set a number of of uh, wins goals for each season. We don't set a goal of winning conference championships or state championships. We just don't ever talk about it. And I, I encourage our players to set individual goals. Um, and I encourage our, our team and our captains, if they want to set team goals, they can set that on their own. Um, but, but we don't talk as a coaching staff uh, in front of our team. And we, we don't have team meetings to talk about how many wins we want to have and whatnot. Um, we talk about our four daily goals every single day, though. Um, and I think, like you said, goal number one, having fun. I, I, it's high school basketball. It's, this is not, um, this is not, it's not brain surgery. This is we're, high school basketball. It's supposed to be fun and we're supposed to smile and it's okay to laugh and it's okay to show emotion. Um, and it's, it's okay to enjoy it and have a good time. I think also uh, research shows that, that players play best and perform best whenever they are, when they feel safe and when they're having fun and when they're enjoying themselves. Um, uh, I'm not saying that, that we don't, we don't get down to business and work. We do, but, but uh, we want our kids to have fun. And then number two, like you said, uh, getting better and, and competing, um, trying to approach uh, every day from a standpoint of it, it's a win that day if you made yourself better. And so we come out of every drill, come out of every practice um, with the idea that if we compete as hard as we possibly could, um, we're probably going to get better. Um, I don't want to sell ourselves short. I think sometimes, sometimes you can win and yet you still didn't get better and you still didn't perform your best. I think, I think you sell yourself short if the overall goal is just, is just winning because you can win um, and, and, and not perform to the best of your ability. So we always try to talk about being our best and getting better. And then number four, uh, game point mentality, just trying to understand that 
uh, every possession is the most important possession, which is which the possession that we're on right now is game point. And if we can have that mentality that maybe we'll value the ball and value that position. Um, so it's just a, just the mentality we want our players to have. It doesn't make it, uh, I don't think, right or wrong. And I'm not certainly not against setting goals, but that's just kind of how we approach um, the idea of, of each day. Um, those, those four goals. And we have our captains when they start our huddle every day at practice. Uh, right before we start practice, our captains will, will recite those goals to our guys. Um, and that's something that we just we just try to live by every day. Well, you stated there's two things that um, happen in life and also in basketball that we can control. And that's attitude and effort. Elaborate on that. Um, yeah, I think maybe just um, the standpoint of – not, not being, not being um, result oriented. I guess you'd say again. Um, life can throw out different things at our players. Uh, we talk about it every day. You can't really control that, but you can't control your attitude. And you can't control your effort. So um, basketball is a great teacher. I think it can teach you to deal with adversity. It can teach you to deal with success. And so we try to approach both the same way. I think you can learn a lot um, from dealing with both of those things. Um, regardless if things have gone really well or regardless is if, if, if things have not gone well, you still, no matter what, you still have a choice and you control uh, what your attitude is going to be and then how, how hard you're going to work. Um, and so I think that's something that uh, we just try to approach um, every practice, every game uh, with that, every situation that we come across throughout the course of the season is hey, we still control our attitude. We still control our effort. Well, in the eight years at Forest Shields, you've had nothing but tremendous success. What are some of the biggest challenges you face today as a teacher and also as a basketball coach? I think um, the biggest challenge continues to be um, our our calling and why we got into teaching and coaching. I think that it's fighting for the hearts and minds of young people. Um, and And – the idea that, that we're not in it to win and, and we're not in it for championships. We're in it to try to influence uh, the minds and hearts of young folks and to shape, to, to help them shape their future, to become the best they can possibly be the best version of themselves. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Um, me, me personally, I, I would say my biggest challenge um, is, is finding, finding balance in, in my personal life. Um, Coaching um, has a way of um, making you equate your own personal self-worth with the performance of, of your players and the success of your players and how your players um, you know, act on and off the court and, and, and the choices they make. Um, I'm not a parent, but I'm sure that's a, that, that's a lot like parenting. You equate your self-worth with, with, with your children. And so um, trying to find balance between, between that is, is tough. I mean, uh, me personally, my, my wife, um, we live here in, in, uh, in Union County and just finding time, um, finding a balance to spend time with her uh, and to be fair to her because I spend so much time with our players. Um, so I think that's, that's definitely, a, definitely a challenge that all coaches face was, is your personal life and, and um, finding family time as well. So, For people who haven't seen Forest Hills play, how would you describe a Forest Seeds team coached by you? Um, I would say that the first thing that I would hope folks would say is that we, um, we have a team that plays for each other and that plays really hard. Um, and that's, that, that's you know, it, we're going to be different from year to year, depending on the players that we have. Um, we still hope that our guys play play really hard, and that we play for each other. And I hope that that's evident on the court with with uh, with our teamwork and how hard we play together. Coach, over the years, especially at the public school level, you you have changes in the roster. How do you make the adjustments each and every year to figure out? Okay, this is the style of play that we're going to have based on the roster we have. I think that's uh, that's certainly the challenge. Um, you want to have a system and you want to have um, a foundation 
for, for how you do things. But at the same time, I think you have to be flexible um, because your roster can be changing um, from season to season, like you said. Um, and so something that, you know, you know, that each coach does in the off season is you sit down and you think about what you have coming back and you, and you make your minor tweaks and your adjustments and um, you'll check, you, you'll keep your same philosophies, but at the same time you'll make tweaks and adjustments based on who's returning. Um, so. I would imagine coach from year to year with the, you know, with the graduations or kids may transfer out, whatever you may have at the public school level, the one thing that you mentioned is you, you have to be flexible. You have to make the adjustments along the way. Um, I think that's pretty impressive because if you look at, like you said, for the most part, you know, at Forest Hills, it's a, it's a community school. It's a small town community. It's a 2A. But each and every year that you've been there since 2012, you continue to put a winner on the court year in, year out. Um, you've won 20 plus games the last six years in a row. Um, and like I said before, you're averaging 27. So I think the philosophy that you have has really worked because you're putting fun back into the game. It's not, you know, you, you want the kids to compete and win, but at the same time, like you said, it's high school basketball. You want them to have fun. And like you said before, um, stats prove that if you're enjoying the game and having fun, you're going to probably do a little bit better at it because it's fun for you. Uh, that being said, what's the biggest impact that you want to have on your players moving forward? Um, I would say that I hope my players would look back and say my experience with Coach Size and my experience with Forest Hills basketball uh, helped shape me into a better man, helped shape me into the best version of myself. Um, and that um, – you know, they would look back and they would really, really, really enjoy their high school basketball experience, something that our coaching staff sits down and talks about. Um, every preseason meeting, one of the things that, that, that we talk about is let's make our basketball program the most fun to play for in the whole state of North Carolina. Um, let's make, let's give our kids like, give our kids the coolest experience, something that they, it doesn't matter about wins and losses, let's give them the greatest team experience that we can possibly give them and expose them to as many things as we can. And so I hope that they look back and they say, uh, you know what, uh, our experience there was a ton of fun and uh, we also learned a lot and it also challenged us and helped made us a uh, better man, something that can help them um, when they're in college or uh, whenever they have a family, whenever they're raising children of their own, maybe one day whenever they're coaching their own team as well. So um, that's what I would hope. Well, Coach, one thing is evident. Um, the culture that you um, developed at Forest Hills is, is very impressive. And it's something that I think should be a model for a lot of people, especially coaches at the public school level, should probably embrace. And um, it's been fun for Phenon to get to know you more on a personal level, um, looking at your background and looking at the success you've had in your young basketball career. And we want to just say thank you for coming on today's Coach's Corner and Wish you the best of success moving forward. I really appreciate um, you saying those things and um, the, the kind words. Uh, it's certainly humbling. Uh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate uh, Phenom Hoops. I appreciate you, Coach Lewis, for, um, for what you do for kids in the state of North Carolina. And um, look forward to, to working with you some more in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Coach.